What's up guys, Rogue9 here and for the first time ever we now have access to a CTU that has a choice of two different secondary machine pistols. So the questions that arise are, which one should you pick? What are their relative strengths and weaknesses? Will the in-game damage stats be correct, spoiler alert, they aren't? And just for comparison's sake, how do they stack up against the existing machine pistols? Answers to all of these questions and more coming right up. As so often, timestamps to different parts of the video in the comments section below for all of you who are just looking for specific info. And before we get into the nitty gritty comparisons, let me first answer the most common question I have received about the SMG-12 and that is, is it suppressed? And yes, I can confirm that the SMG-12 is in fact integrally suppressed. It does not give your opponent an incoming fire warning indicator, it is a lot quieter than unsuppressed guns and all this also explains why you cannot use any muzzle attachments with this gun and why the baseline damage is so low. Now to get an initial understanding of how these guns compare to each other, we can first compare their baseline stats. The C75 Auto is the most powerful with a medium capacity and the slowest fire rate. The Bering 9 is a bit middle of the road with slightly lower damage, medium capacity and slightly higher fire rate than the C75. The SMG 11 and 12 both have the highest fire rate with the 11 sporting decent power but low capacity and the 12 having the lowest baseline damage but also the highest capacity. Mobility for all four guns is 50. Whatever that means. Reload times are not listed and wouldn't it be great if they were? Hint hint nudge nudge UB. But until then, this is where my first tests come into play and the SMG-12 clocked in the slowest with a reload time from empty of 3 seconds and a tactical reload of 2 seconds. After that we have the C75 Auto with 2.9 seconds and 2 seconds and top of the list here with 2.7 seconds and 1.9 seconds are both the SMG-11 and the Bering 9. So there's a good start, but the in-game damage stats are not the most useful if we truly want to compare the guns. No, what we need is an analysis of a comprehensive damage drop-off test and here are the results. One of the top advantages that machine pistol sidearms have over semi-auto pistols is that they carry their baseline power over a longer distance. Damage drop-off starts at 18 meters and bottoms out at 28 meters. For the unsuppressed weapons I managed to confirm the baseline stats and interestingly the curves for the two existing MPs are exactly the same. The C75 does 2 points extra damage up close and 1 point of extra damage at distance. The SMG-12's damage curve is a good chunk lower overall but that is only because it is suppressed. Once we suppress its competitors as well, they all end up with the exact same damage drop-off curves and yes, that means that the in-game suppressed damage stats are not quite accurate. Here's the same information again as a table for those of you who are into that kind of stuff and something to note here is how powerful the machine pistols are, not just close up but even at long range. Think back to my comparison of the MP5 variants in the game and you will remember that the damage stats ranged from 16 to 30 points per shot. For these guns it's 19 to 35 which shows us that all in all these secondary weapons are highly competitive in terms of their damage output especially when you consider their outstanding fire rates. Since all of these stats amount to only three different damage curves, we end up with three different categories of shots to kill. The unsuppressed C75 at the top, then the bearing and SMG-11 and finally all four weapons suppressed. But this information alone is still not quite enough to allow us to evaluate their damage output. Damage per second is far more telling here and these stats show that the SMG-12 and C75 Auto are essentially on par with the C75 a little more powerful up close and the SMG-12 winning out at distance but only as long as the C75 is unsuppressed. Once you suppress it, it becomes the weakest choice at any range. If we compare the time to kill stats against various various levels of armor, we can observe that on average the unsuppressed C75 consistently beats the SMG-12 by around 20 to 30 milliseconds but add a suppressor into the mix and the tables are reversed. All of these times of course are when firing on full auto and landing body shots with a 100% hit rate. 
My preliminary conclusion here is that even though the C-75 has the highest damage per shot and a decent capacity, the low fire rate negates any advantage this could have given the gun over the other machine pistols and definitely makes it the least favourable choice once you run a suppressor. If you're going to choose the C-75 you should definitely run it unsuppressed to get the most out of its elevated base damage. If you want a silent weapon you are 100% better off choosing the SMG-12. But damage output is only half the story. You also need to be able to hit what you're aiming at so let's now go over to the controllability of each of these guns and one of the most important factors here is what attachments you can use. I've covered the exact mechanics by which grips and muzzle attachments affect recoil in separate videos in the past, so I won't go into too much detail about their functionality here. Links to those other videos at the end if you're interested. As an integrally suppressed weapon, the SMG-12 gets no muzzle adapters, but apart from that it has access to all of the attachments except the ACOG sight. In stark contrast to this, the C-75 gets no attachments at all except for the suppressor which we have already learned is 100% pointless for this gun. It doesn't even have access to the laser sight. Out of all of the weapons in the game there are only 4 that cannot attach the laser sight and this is one of them. Things are not looking good for the C-75. The two previously existing machine pistols get a good selection of attachments and in terms of recoil control the most important ones here are the vertical grip and the compensator. Ah but rogue I hear you cry out. The C75 and the bearing 9 already have fixed vertical grips attached so they will surely have an innate recoil advantage no? Well if you compare the baseline recoil patterns for these four weapons it quickly becomes clear that sadly no, neither of these guns gets any advantage and in fact the recoil patterns of all four guns are exactly the same. So it all boils down to the attachments and if we compare the best possible recoil patterns we can achieve with each gun we can see that the C75 has no change because no attachments, the bearing 9 improves a little with the compensator, the vertical grip on the SMG12 adds even more benefit and last and overall best is the SMG11 with both the vertical grip and compensator attached. And before we move on, one final note to make in relation of controllability is that all of these guns with the exception of the SMG-11 have the option of switching to a single fire mode for when you really want to pick your shots. Last but not least, before I draw my final conclusions, I think it's worth quickly exploring how effective the integral suppressor on the SMG-12 is since in the past, especially with the MP5SD and the 612SD, we have seen that the pre-attached suppressors in Rainbow Six Siege are not always as efficient or effective as their detachable counterparts. I've already demonstrated that the incoming fire indicator is hidden with the SMG-12 so that's a great start but how does the noise suppression compare to that of the other machine pistols once they have also been suppressed? Here, have a listen. So there you have it, yes the SMG-12 is a touch louder than the other machine pistols but not by a massive amount and I am therefore comfortable in confirming that this gun is in fact fully suppressed. Final conclusion time. Compared to a lot of the sidearms and even some of the primary weapons in Rainbow Six Siege, the C-75 Auto is a great little pistol. High damage per shot up to around 20 meters, a great capacity and very respectable fire rate all could have added up to make this gun a favorite choice among the player base. As long as you remember not to attach the suppressor of course, since it currently affects the C-75 more harshly than the in-game stats would suggest as Serenity 17 discovered to his detriment recently. Library, He's dead. An enemy controlled oh, area. <laughs> this gun is fun to use. Where Pretty was? bad though, it took forever to kill Blackbeard. What a noob. 
The only problem for the C-75 is that both characters that can pick the pistol also have access to the SMG-12 and summing up the SMG-12 is pretty easy. It is essentially an exact copy of the suppressed SMG-11, same damage curve, same fire rate and same baseline recoil except that it has double the magazine capacity, the option of attaching the angled grip and the choice of a single fire mode. The fact that the C-75 cannot attach any optics and cannot improve its recoil pattern in any way means that even if you don't suppress that gun, the SMG-12 is the better choice in almost all situations and if stealth is important to you, the SMG-12 is hands down the best sidearm you can pick in the game. And that's it, if you want access to any of these stats for your own analysis, there will be a link in the description below to my online spreadsheet which I will be updating with the new stats from Operation White Noise over the coming days and weeks. What are your thoughts on the new machine pistols? Let me know in the comments below and if you liked the video, click the like button, dislike if you disliked it. And with that guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.